live from the PCTV studios, the Monday Morning Quarterback. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. I'm Dave Ridenour, the Monday Morning Quarterback, and we have another fun show planned for you this evening. Coach Mick is back in studio after a week hiatus, so we'll have some fun talking to Coach about all the weekend's action. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. <laughs> At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. At long last, date night has arrived. And you want to make it something special. Something romantic. You've heard a lot of great things about Panavino in the new downtown district. Fine Italian dining. With a cosmopolitan flair. Drinks before dinner at the bar? Why not? Then it's just us. Savoring the creations of Chef David Brennan. What's this? Dinner and a movie for two? Only $50? Panavino Italian Restaurant truly is the beginning of the perfect evening. In the new downtown Reading. Back here on set at the PCTV Network Studios again, Dave Ridenour, joined by my buddy coach Jim Mick. Uh, Jim, welcome back. Uh, after a week off, you guys had a little Panavino golf tournament. Tell us a little bit about how uh, Dave Brennan treated you guys. Well, Dave Brennan always treats you well in Panavino's. And, and I think you know, and I'll bring it up, that the tournament was held for Tommy Zemak, a victim of ALS and a former Pius player and an inductee into the Tri-County Hall of Fame. And uh, it was held at Willow Hollow. And uh, my buddy Dave Pesota and Jeff Mahalik and, and friends of ours won the tournament with, with 14 under. We were five under. And... Uh, that was better than I thought we were going to do, <laughs> to be good, honest. Good. That's a fun day. You had a nice day to play. And again, of course, the cause was very good. As Tommy Zemak, certainly a friend to a lot of people in our area. And just a, really, really a sad situation with him with, with that Lou Gehrig's disease and, and seeing what he has to go through. But uh, our, our well wishes are with Tommy and his family as well. But, you know, Coach, uh, since you missed last week, uh, Scotty Furman did a nice job in, in your stead, and uh, we had some fun on the show. Let's uh, dive right into our top five, see where everybody is standing this week as we head into the tail end of league play here in the Pioneer Athletic oh, Conference. Already. And, again, we want to thank the Reinhardt boys. There's Ronnie and Keith Reinhardt. Their father, Claude Deacon Reinhardt, started the painting business way back in 1946. And the guys are still maintaining that profession ever since and doing a heck of a job. Number one, PV, still undefeated, doing a heck of a job. They will play uh, for the conference championship. They have clinched the Liberty Division. Potsgrove has done the same in the uh, Frontier Division. So those two teams will be squared off. Spring Ford at the number three spot. Upper Perk with a big win over the Johnnies at their homecoming game on Friday night. And Methacton, two in a row, sneaks in at the number five spot. So there is our top five, again, sponsored by the Reinhardt Painters. Give them a call for all your inside or outside painting needs. 
All right, Jim, well, let's start right now with that number one squad, Perk Valley, coming off a big win, obviously, that we talked about with uh, Perk Valley and Springford. You were at the game. Your son, Jim Jr., is a defensive coach and, and uh, a secondary guy, and there was some talk that maybe they might have a little let down. They weren't sure what was going to happen, how they would feel, and looking ahead to district play or whatever, but they certainly did take care of business shutting out Norristown 43-0. Well, I liked what Coach Heiss said about his squad. He said, we are a very mature squad. We know where we're going. We know what, how we think we can get there. And he said, our kids are going to play hard every game, and we forget the last game, whether it's a good win or a good law or a tough loss. Well, you know, they have a lot of senior leadership. This is certainly a group that have been together, most of them, since freshman year uh, under previous coach Scotty Reed, who brought a lot of those guys up. So many of them have been together for three or four years. Uh, and it was nice to see David Williams, a guy who really had been a, a, you know, reduced, not reduced, but, you know, hadn't run the ball quite as much as they had in the past because of the, the uh, Stephen Sturm quarterback issues that he had in throwing the football. So it was good to see him get off the snide and, and break that 100 yard barrier. Coach. Well, I don't, want to, I don't want to get off the offensive end because Williams and Sturm and, and Owens and those people are, are good football players, but they get the recognition every week and, and well, they should. I want to make mention because I was very impressed with Perk Valley defensively against Springford and they got kids like Nick Marin, who you uh, honored a yep. couple weeks ago, yep. and Mario Scotese. They are solid football players and if they're going to go well into the playoffs and or win the Pac-10 championship, as you know, they're going to have to play defense. And Marin and Scotis are going to lead them in the right direction. Well, again, they did a heck of a job. They held Narstown to minus seven yards rushing and only 90 yards overall. Uh, so they did a heck of a job, again, on that defensive side. And, you know, when we had Nick Marin on there, it was funny. We, we asked him those questions. He said, now nah, the defense doesn't have a chip on the shoulder. We don't feel like we're overlooked or underappreciated. But certainly that offense has really been known for what they've been able to do with Jaworski and Sturm and Williams and all the rest. But, and then, you know, the thing I liked when I saw them play earlier uh, against a, a good Penn Ridge team was their kicker. And Garrett Patla had three more field goals, Jim. You know, he had a 20-yarder or a 30-yarder and a 35-yarder. And, and, again, you don't think about field goal kickers that much in high school football. But as you get it going and hopefully as they continue to win in, the, in these playoffs, he could come up huge for them. Well, you really said it. As they move through the playoffs, and hopefully they will move through, that Pat Lav is going to have to make a game-winning field goal before it's all over. We both know that. And he's certainly capable of doing that. He certainly is. I mean, he's a guy who can bang him. I mean, he kicks the ball out of the end zone. Yep. There's a touchback on almost every kickoff. And, again, if there's a good snap and a good hold, I would think the chances of him making a field goal are going to be pretty high. Now, on the other side of that, Coach, you know, we talked about Norristown, and it's still hard for us, and myself in particular, to think about them not being able to win a football game there. They have too many good athletes. You know, Coach Powell is a good guy. He works hard. Uh, but they do have a couple of young bright spots, two quarterbacks, both underclassmen, uh, Isaiah Webb and Steve DePaul as a junior and sophomore, that maybe could be the future of Norristown football. Well, Coach Powell will get that program going. He'll get the discipline down in that program. He'll get the players out. He'll get them in the weight room. And he's having a tough year. Well, there, there's no question about that. The one thing that I always wanted to do as a coach, and, and I could be very negative, was – I think you got to come out of a game where you get beat badly, and we got to have one or two things that we did well. And Coach Powell said this uh, himself, that three times in the second half, the defense stiffened for Norristown against PV and forced Patla into a field goal. So they're going in the right direction. And again, there's certainly no moral victories, and, and I know you come from the same school I do, Coach, but it is good to see that the kids are still not quitting. They're not, not right. showing up for practice. You know, they're hanging in there, hanging in there, even though they have yet to win a game this season. But we wish Norristown all the best, and hopefully they'll get one before the end of the year. Now, the team that lost to PV in that showdown in Royersford yet at Coach McNelly Stadium, we were wondering how they were going to come out. Uh, I, I said it probably would not be a good time to beat the Boyertown Bears because uh, Springford is going to come out all fired up and ready to go. And obviously, Chad Brubaker and his staff had those kids ready as they shut out Boyertown. Boyertown's third straight shutout, by the way, 52-zip. Well, I think Brubaker said it himself. 
were anxious to get back on the field because that's the best way to forget the last game. They got back on the field, and lo and behold, on the first play from scrimmage, T.J. Pergine uh, uh, mm -hmm. threw to Stone Scarcelli, 69 yards, touchdown, first play of the game, and off they went and scored something like 52 points. So they're, they're still a very good football team and are going to be heard from when they get into the playoffs. Well, you know, it's funny that uh, they were so fired up offensively that, uh, you know, um, Boyertown did a decent job on Gibson, a guy that you really like, Coach. Matt Gibson is a shifty little runner, can run between the tackles, can also bounce outside. So they did a decent job on him. But then Selwyn Simpson, the other back, has a big game. He scores three touchdowns for them. So, you know, it was like they were keying on one guy and the other guy. They have so many weapons that they're able to score. And 24 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, 31 nothing at half. So, you know, it was tough for Boyertown. And, and Coach Parkinson even said, hey, they're bigger than us, they're stronger than us. And they just whipped us at the line of scrimmage. Well, Coach Kamat was very, very honest. We got beat up. We got beat by a better team. They had more depth. They had better players, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, Dave, talking about Boyertown, they had 16 times they were dropped for negative yards. Now, they must have been passing. 16 times in one game. I know. And, and, and you know that I think this Cap kid is a very, very good athlete. But it's the old omen that unless you have an offensive line in front of you, blocking for the quarterback and the running backs, et cetera, you can't get anything done. You saw that yesterday in the Eagles game. Well, you know, it was a stat that I had written down here, too, that, you know, 16 losses, well, they, do, they do run primarily out of, the, out of the spread formation, which is the shotgun, which Jerry Cap is in control there as the quarterback. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities for those negative yardage plays. But between sacks and tackles behind the line of scrimmage, 16 times has got to be very, very disheartening uh, for, for the uh, Boyertown Bears. And I was surprised because I wasn't sure because they have that young sophomore, that Aiden Mathias, who came in when Cap was hurt and played a solid game against Perk Valley uh, when, when Cap had to be an ankle and couldn't go. And I thought, well, maybe they'll keep Mathias at quarterback and move Cap out there to try to get two, uh, two athletes on the field. But Mathias hasn't been able to get back in there, and, and I'm sure Boyertown is searching. Well, with, with what we've been talking about, it would be difficult to throw the ball no matter who's back there at quarterback, whether it's Mathias or, and put Cap out at a wideout where he is very good, played there last year and was all league. So I know George has a lot of uh, struggling with injuries, et cetera, et cetera, and, and it's a tough season, and I know they're working extremely hard over at Boyertown to get this thing turned around, and they still got time to turn it around. They certainly do. Well, let's look at our um, scoreboard. We have our scoreboard, our uh, Liberty Division scoreboard, and it has, also has the standings there. And again, brought to you by the Linfield N National Golf Course. And again, Robbie Kleckner, our good friend down there, and George Hoops, Robbie. Coach P, all the guys down at Linfield National. There you see all the scores. And the last one we want to talk about was a big game for both sides there is at O&J. Methacton had broken their little winless streak the week before with a big win over Norristown. They come back and win on the road over there at the Henry Burnett Stadium over there on the field with a big 14 to 12 win over the Cats. Well, let me ask you this. You're the history major here in, in football. W without a doubt, in my mind, the win Methacton over O&J was the biggest upset of the year. And we like to talk about upsets because Fans like to see it once in a while, except if you're on the losing end Correct. and you're favored. Now, when was the last real big upset in this? I got one game in mind, but I'm going way back. I'm going was, back to when Myers first uh, started at Pottstown, okay. when they knocked off Lansdale Catholic. I mean, that was that oh. was about as big as an upset as we've had in this league for a while. Uh, you know, Brett Myers in his maybe, I don't know, second year in the, in the, th in the league, and Pottstown really didn't have a shot at beating at Lansdale Catholic, but they knocked them off here at Greg Memorial Field. He came up with a great game plan. I know they waited till the, till the clock was down the last second and milked it and held on, and I, I don't know if I can remember another one bigger than that. Well, it's funny you come up with that because that's the I one sure I had in mind. Too, yeah. That's the one I was thinking of, Pottstown uh, Lansdale. And as I said previously, 
Upsets are part of the game, and, and fans like to see it, as, as I said before, as long as you're not on the losing end of it. Yeah, well, again, Mathacton did a heck of a job. You know, Ryan O'Toole with another big game. He had the, the game-winning touchdown the week before when he caught that little ball out in the flat and broke about three or four tackles and uh, got into the end zone after a 26-yard pitch and catch. When he and Ekman comes up with another big game. But defensively is where Mathacton really stood tall, is that they knocked off of, uh, ONJ's uh, run game. And, you know, Scherf and all those kids have been doing a pretty good job on the ground. And, you know, they held them in check and only 77 yards on the ground. Coach, and, you know, we've been preaching that all year. So how are you going to win these games? Play good defense, keep it close going into the fourth quarter, and you never know what happens. And Mathacton wins because the fact is their field or extra point kicker was good on his tries and Owen J. Quinn convert. Well, I don't want to be redundant, but I've said that this before this year, that Owen J. just doesn't run the ball consistently the way you and I and most of the fans are used to watching Owen J run the ball. Okay, they ran the ball for only 70 yards. Yeah. 22 carries, 70 yards. That comes out to about 3.1 average per carry. You just can't win football games. And as we have said many times, defense and the running game. And the Stewart kid is a good quarterback. They got some players over there. The Prowicki kid's a good player. Uh, I know Coach Cole. Is Kolka is, is scratching his head about this time to get here again, this thing turned around before it's over. But again, three more interceptions for, yep. for uh, Mathacton, so the Warriors stepped up big defensively and, and again, took their time and, and did what they had to do. Paul Lepree said they had a five-game uh, season, and that's the way they're going to approach it. They beat Norristown, now they beat ONJ. They got a tough uh, match ahead for them next week, which we'll talk about when we, we address that, but still, two big wins in a row for the Warriors, and it's good to see those kids. I said that after the uh, Boyertown game when I was over there, and it was a back and forth affair that that Mathacton would have had the ball one more time they would have had a shot to win but those kids didn't quit they still out they're coming out for practice every day and, and I'm sure things I, are going a little bit smoother I would like to mention Ryan O'Toole who is who's one of their better players for the last couple of years he accounted for 206 yards both rushing and passing of the 240 yards that Mathacton garnered and another another Ryan Ryan May according to coach Lepree played very very well one of the hardest workers on the squad as well. So it's good to see those kids come up with a big win on the road at Bucktown. Yeah, that's... Now we have the other side of, of the ledger, the Frontier Division. Uh, we can check that scoreboard out too if we have that. There we go. They are the smaller schools in uh, population. And again, brought to you by the Linfield National Guys. There you see the standings and what's going on there and the scores. And, and let's start out with that Upper Perk PJP game, which was the game shown right here on the PCTV Network Sports Channel. And I was uh, fortunate enough to do the game with Bill Zinfer, and I was really, really impressed with the way Upper Perk played. They were physical. They were fast. Uh, I thought that Tom Hans had a great game plan, and they jumped on PJP coach in that first series, went right down the field, and, and, and the Johnnies never recovered. Well, they had 517 yards of total offense, and, and when I walked in here tonight, that's the only thing you wanted to talk about was how good Upper Perk looked and their game plan, et cetera. But I don't want to throw any salt on the wound, but I'm saying I, am, I was shocked, and I'm even more shocked, of the Potts Grove Upper Perk game. I thought Upper Perk would challenge them a little bit stronger than what they did, but because Upper Perk is a good football team led by Zeke Coleman, and they got that Ryan Kendrick kid who's about 6'5". He had six catches for 99 yards. We know about Tyler Wary. Wary. They're a good football team, and maybe what you're saying is that Upper Perk has found the way to win and is doing a good job of it now. We'll see as we go through the rest of yeah, the couple and games. Yeah, and another kid, Austin Tutulio, um, Tutolo or Tutulio, I think is how he pronounces it. Um, he really is a guy who caught my eye as well. He had been the projected starting tailback, got hurt, so they moved Wary back to tailback and put Tutulo in there at the fullback. And between the two of them, you know, they, they rushed for nearly 200 yards and scored a touchdown. As you mentioned, Kendra, two big interceptions yep. on the defensive side as well. So he really played a solid game. And Zeke Hallman really looked like he had command of that offense. He was 16 for 21, coach, for 285 and four TDs. And, and again, I really like the way that uh, Tommy Hans mixed it up between the run and the pass. Well, you forgot the one thing, too, though, which they've been having trouble with, defense, and that's defense. Yeah. And if they're going to – I think they're ranked third or fourth right now for the, for the playoffs. 
Yes. I think yep. they're third behind Pottsgrove. Yep. If they're going to continue uh, into the uh, playoffs, the district playoffs, they're, they're going to have to improve defensively because I think, I could be wrong, they may be giving up more than 30 points they per are, game. They are, 33. I mean, that's, yeah. a lot of, yeah. that's a lot of points. And again, I, I watched their defense, and they kept everybody in check. Brandon Knox, unfortunately, the running back who had been playing pretty solid for Pope John Paul, he went out early with a, with a leg injury as he limped off the field, but De Laurentiis was solid. He tried to force a little bit because he didn't have any, any of his helpers around. Um, he, he played pretty well. He led him in passing and in rushing. A uh, little Danny Serino was a tough little kid coming out of the backfield. Tally. Yeah, and um, and our, our buddy uh, uh, Jurger played solid as a linebacker, but they just sort of got overwhelmed. And, and again, I was very impressed with Tom Hans's gang, and they move on to three and one in their divisional play. Now another team that won a big game. Gary Rodenball squad, my old Trojans, they played Upper Marion, and uh, it was good to see Isaiah Mays back in the picture. They had been some problems with trying to figure out who's going to do what, and between he and Larry Wingo, I think they have two pro solid kids to, to uh, handle the football. They're still struggling at the quarterback, and they're going to go with Morton. They got a young freshman named Wiggins who's getting some time, Jim, but they win 20-6 to six over Upper Marion. Solid and exciting football game because it did come down to the fourth quarter. Uh, where Pottstown got two scores and made it a 26 game. And I'd like to say this, th there's nothing tougher than a, a, a long season where you're losing. And, and Pottstown had one win. I give Gary Rodenbaugh and his staff and the kids a lot of credit. Gary Rodenbaugh has been around the block, so to speak, in football. He knows what he's doing. He, he knows what his deficiencies are. He makes every correction, every effort to correct those deficiencies. And big win for Pottstown, and maybe they can carry through on it now. Yeah. Stay healthy. Stay yeah. healthy and keep working. And again, Ernie McAlvin is another guy we like who played a good game on the defense side of the ball. Where's number 44? Aaron Diamond, another good athlete. One of the juniors, one of the underclassmen for the Trojans. And finally, that game that uh, everybody was talking about over the weekend because of the excitement factor, I guess, is that Pottsgrove scores 56 points and gives up 37 on their home field to Phoenixville. They were down by 10, 24-14 at the half. I'm sure there was a, some excitement going on at that locker room speech, but the Falcons rebounded and outscored the, the Phantoms 42-13 in the second half to remain undefeated in that frontier division. Yeah. You know the one stat that really jumps out at me? It's hard to believe, really. Faison of Pottsgrove and Garcia of Phoenixville, they combined as opponents for 447 yards. Mm -hmm. and six Almost 450, <laughs> yeah. 450 and six yards. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And as you said, uh, Pottsgrove is behind 24, 14 and a half. Coach Penny Packer attributed that to fundamental mistakes. And somebody must have blew the roof off the locker room at halftime because they came out, had no turnovers the second half, give the ball to Faison, bang, bang, bang. He's a tough kid to stop, and he's he one is. of your favorites. You he like is. him. I really do like the way he plays. I say, you know, most kids, especially young kids, high school kids, when they're playing running back, they just want to get the ball and run as fast as they can. His patience and the way he sets up blocks is well mature beyond his years, and he certainly is a heck of a player. But, hey, how about Matt Garcia? He now has nearly 1,500 yards. He's yep. leading the Pioneer Athletic Conference in rushing. And, again, he did what he could do. He had 200-plus yards, a couple long runs, a 77 and a 61-yard touchdown run against the Falcons, who take a lot of pride in their defense. We have a lot of skilled players in the league this year, and you're, you're talking about one now in Garcia. And they also have good quarterbacking in Troy Rossman. Nasser Green's a good football player, both on offense and defense. Uh, you come in let down against the Phoenixville team, you're going to get beat. But if both of these teams are going to advance into the playoffs, they're going to have to cut down on the penalties. Because the total, yeah. there was 160 yards of, of penalties, 80 on each team. Yeah. And you can't have that if you're going to, if you're going to keep moving on. Well, you talked about uh, Upper Perk with their 517 total yards. There were 763 total yards between, <laughs> between Pottsgrove and, and Phoenixville. And that's certainly not the kind of game that Rick Pennypacker likes to coach in and be a part of. But it must have been a lot of fun for the fans at that game on Friday night. Well, our first break coming up here, we're going to take a quick timeout. 
when uh, Coach and I come back, we're going to look forward to this weekend's games as we're in the last weekend of our divisional play, and we're going to see how that all breaks down right here on the Vallejo Stun Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from great burgers to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly Doc service, Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr., call us or visit our website now. Back here on the Vlaus Dunn Shorts Monday Morning Quarterback and Dave Ryan there, joined by my co-host Jim Mick. And coach, let's talk about the Liberty Division first off. Uh, those Boyertown Bears who have been struggling travel down to Norristown to take on the, the winless uh, a team from coach with Coach Powell. Uh, this is certainly a game where Boyertown would like to try to make things right. But, you know, here's a shot for Norristown to get on the winning side of the ledger. Well, both of those teams at, at their respective schools are, are looking at this as a possible win. We got a shot at winning this ball game. a good shot. George got to get his team healthy. They got to get healthy. They got to work on offensive line play, protect cap, protect the running back, play solid defense and they'll make it they'll be in the game. Norristown on the other hand, get those young quarterbacks uh, into the ball game, throw the ball a little bit, play solid defense again and it'll be very very interesting finish. And again, you know, a theory that you always like is I did too when you're in a game sort of could go either way. Keep it close to that fourth quarter, fourth quarter. and then you never know what will right. happen then. You know, now O&J uh, coming off a tough loss at home. They travel to Springford. Again, Springford still trying to, to, uh, to uh, come back from that loss to PV with a big win this week, see if they can keep it going, because I know they certainly have their eyes set on the District 1 playoffs. So O&J travels down the Royersford, which could be a tough ball game. Well, if I was Springford, I'd come into that game with my eyes ready to go and my attitude ready to go because O and J, we know O and J always has tough kids, tough competitive kids. They had a tough loss last week. They have got to be ready to play, and I think you're going to see a good football game. I think that's Saturday afternoon, Dave, down okay. at, at Springfield. Okay, I think it could it's be their homecoming. Yeah. I know they do play yeah. a Saturday afternoon when they have their homecoming game. So cheap, please make sure you check your local listings for that one. And then the last game is PV Travels and Methacton. Mm -hmm. Methacton coming off uh, two straight wins, uh, going out of their hands full with Robbie Heist gang. And, uh, but it's a home game for Methacton. See what they can do and, and put together another solid defensive effort. It's going to take uh, 11 on each side to play with PV. Well, Paul has gotten his team better game after game, but I can't say the, the same. I can say the same for Coach Heist down at PV. They have gotten better every game. Now, if I think they're going to make a show in the playoffs, I, I think they got to get a, just a little bit more balance between run and pass. So, if I'm Coach Lapree, preparing for PV, I'm preparing for both both the run and the pass, but before, you just prepare for them to throw the throw ball. Throw the football. Try to make them one-dimensional, maybe, yep. and again, they can hang in there again. They played great run defense last week as they knocked off the Cats. 
On the other side, we have Upper Marion traveling to Phoenixville. Phoenixville now, how are they going to come out and play? Are they going to have a big letdown after their offensive explosion but loss at Potts Grove? Or are they going to come back saying, hey, you know what? We can win. We're still in the hunt for maybe a playoff spot, an outside chance for that. They're at home at Washington Field. What happens between Upper Marion and Phoenixville? Well, coach? first of all, Phoenixville has been a little erratic, just not season-wise. They get erratic in ball games where they come out and – and don't seem to show up for the first half, and then they're gangbusters in the second half. I think if they come out with the skill that they have, with Green and Garcia and Rossman, they should be the winner in that football game. Now, Upper Perk, who coming off a real big homecoming win last Friday night over there in Red Hill, they travel to Pottstown. They have a Saturday afternoon with the Tro a game with the Trojans. Again, the Trojans coming off a big win, knocking off Upper Marion. Can they maintain their momentum and uh, give Upper Perk all they can handle? Or does Upper Perk come out there and flex their muscles and spread the ball around 517 yards they had last week against Pope John Paul? Break down that one, Coach. Boy, that's a tough one. The one thing I'm going to say about that football game, because Upper Perk can be high-powered offense with Hallman, and Kendra and those people. I think if I'm Pottstown, their, their attitude's got to be good. The kids have got to be feeling good about themselves. I think in this game, Coach Roland Ball has got to try to keep the ball away from Upper Perk. Not necessarily scoring every time they have it, but getting first downs, moving the chains, moving the chains, and keeping the ball away from Upper Perk. And work on their special teams because Upper mm. Perk has good special teams and good play. they got a freshman, Tyrese Reed, who is a, a little a guy back there, a little scat back, who can really take it to the house. All right, and our final game is Potsgrove and Pope John Paul. Potsgrove, uh, I'm sure, is going to work extra hard on their defensive side of the ball this week. I know Rick Penny Packer, and he'll be determined to get them to play hard defensively again. They travel down to play Pope John Paul in a Saturday afternoon affair. Pope John Paul, Coach Graver, was not happy after that game on Friday night. Well, he was extremely ha unhappy because they were very suspect on defense. And I'm sure if you talk to Tony Erger and, and Rory, they would tell you the same thing, which they did basically in the paper. We are going to have to get better defensively. But they have a yeoman task of stopping that offensive line and phase on at Potsgrove. But I know the kids down at PJP overall have been happy with this season, and I think you're going to see them come out with a – with an outstanding effort. All right. Well, that'll do it for our first segment of the show, the high school part of the Vlaho Stunt Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback with Coach Mick and I. Now we get a great opportunity. It's a fun part to meet our player of the week and his coach uh, after this break. So we're going to take a quick time out. We're going to get the set changed up here a little bit. And when we come back, we'll have the player of the week and his coach right here on the Vlaho Stunt Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Tee it up at Linfield National Golf Club. It's a shot worth taking. PGA professional Robert Kleckner heads his family-owned course that covers over 6,300 yards of versatile playing ground. Located near the Linfield exit of Route 422, Linfield National drives competitive play at competitive rates. Stop for a cool one at Mulligan's, then swing an ego stroke on the simulator course. Take the video tour. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Fred Bean's Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Bean's Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Bean's Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243. 800-222-0243 or online at fredbeans.com.
Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment, to countless draft beers, from great burgers, to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs, to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer Jr., call us or visit our website now. At Blahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Flahost Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Blahos of Blahos Dunn Insurance. And we're in your community. Back here on the Velaz Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback, Dave Ridenauer, the Monday Morning Quarterback. And this is always a great time of our show. We get an opportunity to see the guys without all their gear on, their helmets and shoulder pads and no eye black, and get a chance to good look, uh, get a good look at these good-looking young men, these student athletes. And this week from Methacton, we have Ryan O'Toole, who is a senior, one of the co-captains uh, for the Warriors, and his coach in his seventh year, Paul Lepre. First of all, guys, congratulations on a big win uh, over at O&J, and, and thanks for stopping by and saying hello, Paul. Uh, you know, it was a tough start for the season, but the last couple of weeks, it seems like things are getting much better with two big wins in a row. Well, I think, Dave, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about senior leadership and Ryan and Dylan Henry and Jason Ekman and Stephen Rhodes, who um, helped captain the team. You know, we last two years we've been very young with a, with a uh, smaller group of upperclassmen, experience, you know, smaller group and experience-wise, you know, getting their feet wet. And this year, the same thing. And we looked at the first four games being um, that they're non-division games uh, as just that, almost like preseason games. Uh, to bring along the younger younger players, and, and um, Ryan and the rest of the upperclassmen did a good job of um, helping them come along, giving them confidence in, in their ability to to play at the varsity level, and then going into our league season, that experience there seems to be paying off for us at this point. Well, you know, I know Ryan that you said uh, before the season started that your <laughs> expectations were a lot higher this year. You know, you did a lot of things in the off season, and you were really looking forward to the new divisional setup. Uh, how did the guys approach that this year from Methacton? I mean, you are in the, in the Liberty Division, which is with the bigger schools, the, the higher populated schools. So what kind of mindset did you guys have coming into the season? Uh, we're just putting in a lot of off-season work, that's all it is. Uh, as Coach said, we are a little younger than most teams, but uh, just took a couple games for the young guys to get used to it and get in the flow of things, and I think they really stepped up the last two weeks. Well, as one of the captains and one of the seniors on the squad, uh, Ryan, uh, are you a, uh, uh, you don't appear to be, but are you a rah-rah kind of guy, or are you a leader by example, or how you try to get your message across to some of the younger guys on, this is what you have to do week in and weekend and uh, play on the weekends? It just comes in that practice. Uh, they ask the questions. I try to provide the examples and do the drills as best I can, and then coaching staff that takes it from there. Well, you guys have a new field and new lights and all that down there this year, which certainly has to be a, a shot in the arm for, for your program, Paul. Uh, tell us a little bit about how all that has uh, finally happened. I know it's been a while down there that you've been trying to fight the zoning and different issues that you had, and, and now all of a sudden you, your, your facilities are starting to, to upgrade a little bit. Is that certainly a, a, a windfall for you? Uh, yeah, I think without a doubt. I mean, I thought there would have been a little bit more enthusiasm throughout the uh, student body in wanting maybe to, to participate. I mean, it cer certainly has been a shot in the arm for attendance at Friday night games as opposed to coming out 
on Saturday afternoons. I think the players feel that on a Friday night. There, there's more electricity, a little bit more energy, which, which you know is going gonna, is gonna to help them be more motivated to play well. Well, the Friday night lights is always kind of a neat thing, and particularly in high school football. I, when I played at Pottstown, we were one of the few teams that had lights, so we were sort of the unusual one, if you will. Uh, now that's sort of the norm as opposed to the abnormal, and, and I'm sure you guys uh, enjoy those Friday nights a lot better than a Saturday afternoon. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And uh, did you find it's a little bit different in your preparation? You know, a lot of times when you have a Saturday game, you have that extra day. Are you trying? Are you squ uh, squeezing more things in to get ready for Friday nights? Yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, there's no excuse whether you have four practices a week, three practices a week. You just got to get your work in and just come play the best. Has there been adjustment for the coaching staff with that, Paul? Playing pre predominantly on Saturdays, now Friday nights. Uh, do you find yourself having to adjust your practice schedules a little bit? No, you know what? We, we, we plan for a Friday game as far as our weekly schedule goes being in pads. And then when we have that extra day, if we're playing on Saturdays, we just come out in um, practice jersey and shorts and, and review and just make sure everybody is feeling comfortable about their job and their responsibilities for mm -hmm. Saturday. You know, you talked about Jason Ekman being one of the uh, uh, captains as well. It seems like you and Jason have certainly teamed up and, and created a, a pretty good chemistry uh, between you. Tell us a little bit about that and, and how you and the quarterback work uh, hand in hand together. Uh, he's been one of my great friends. I've been playing with him for about five or six years now. Uh, we just practice the routes during practice and just come to game time, we were able to get it done in the last couple of weeks. Well, you know, you all are a sort of a dual threat. You, you run the ball as well as uh, this past weekend. You know, you, you had some carries on the ground and you also caught the ball coming out of the backfield. Uh, do, do you like that ability to be able to come out there? Is that part of your all around game? Absolutely. I think it's, it's an advantage that I can have in a game time situation, uh, whether I'm running the ball or receiving the ball. I think it's harder for the defense to be able to predict what I'm going to do. Well, you know, Coach, you have a, a lot of guys that have played both sides of the ball. Uh, you're, you know, one of the things that you, I think you just mentioned it, that you thought maybe the numbers might be a little bit better coming out to play for football uh, with, with the new lights and the new field and things. So you do have a lot of guys. Uh, how do you handle that, playing uh, guys playing both offense and defense? I think that's part of our practice preparation. You know, with, with the conditioning we do during the week, we set these guys up for that. And they know going in, look, we got to play four quarters. And how many opportunities do you get to play high school football? These guys don't want to come off the field. You know, Ryan's on every team, but I think one special team. And, um, you know, his motor during the week, you know, gives him that conditioning to, to run his motor on the weekend, which – he and, and a number of other guys just take on that responsibility. Look, we know we're going to have to play both ways. If we bust it at practice, it's going to come naturally in the game, and that's what several of these guys um, have committed to do through their years, through our lean years. You know, the last couple of years have been really lean, and a lot, a lot is on his shoulders along with, with the other upperclassmen, and, and they've taken that responsibility in stride and done a tremendous job for us. Now, playing both ways, obviously you have to prepare for both offense and defense. Uh, um, tell us a little bit about how you do your weekly preparation. Do you put more time in on one side of the ball or the other, or how do you get yourself ready to play either Friday night or Saturday afternoon? Uh, main, I'm mainly offense, but there's no excuse for me on defensive side. Uh, every Tuesday is our offensive practice. That's where we do uh, offensive drills, offensive footwork, the steps we have to take, the plays we're going to run throughout the week. And then every Wednesday is our defensive practice. We do the sled, practice getting off blocks, and wrapping up and tackling. Now, are you a film guy? Do you like to watch a lot of film? I mean, it seems to be a, a difference from when I played. You know, we didn't have very good technical facilities. We had an old 16 millimeter. You couldn't see anyway. But, you know, a lot of the guys that have been coming on the show each week say that they really get into the film watching. Are you in that too? Absolutely. The huddle, it's fantastic. I watch them all the days a week. Yeah, so you obviously get a chance. Now, when, when you're a, a running back and, you, you know, A, you run the ball, B, you catch the ball coming out of the backfield, what kinds of things do you look for? Do you look at the defense? you look at some of their players? you look at maybe how you can get open? What do you look at when you watch films? I, uh, when I'm receiving the ball, I look for the zone drops. So I know where to sit down in a zone because if uh, most high school 
uh, players will just run right into an, another zone. I think I'm very good at uh, finding a zone and sitting down and finding, finding, finding a good grass. spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure that's stuff that you work on, uh, uh, Paul. And again, you know, with Jason and, and Ryan being, you know, hooked up to, together for so long that they have a, a really good connection. They do. And, and you know what? I, I think Jason has learned also that, you know, although Ryan's a go to guy, that there's other guys in the offense that he can spread a ball around to. And um, he, he's learned to uh, look the other way once in a while, you know. <laughs> I know he likes getting the ball yeah, to Ryan, but, yeah. you, know, you know, we've got some other athletes right. that he spreads the ball around to. And, um, you know, but Ryan comes up big, big for us when he has to. You know, we had a couple drops the other night. He had the long uh, touchdown pass uh, in the, early in the third quarter. It looked like from our sideline, he might have dropped it. All we needed, <laughs> that's the last thing we needed right, in that right. kind of tight scoring game was another drop. But uh, he came through big time and uh, made a nice play on the ball. Well, the last two weeks, you've been a big part of, of the win, Ryan. You know, and against Norristown, you, at the end of the game, you caught a 26-yard touchdown pass from your buddy Ekman and broke a couple of tackles and were able to get into the end zone. And, and you had to hold on for dear life because Norristown came down and ended up getting the ball deep in the red zone there as the time ran out. So you had a little bit of excitement at the end of the game. Tell us a little bit about that one. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, it was just an un unbelievable experience. But I can't, I can't do any of it without the guys up front. And I just think over the last couple of weeks, they've really stepped up. We have, we've got some couple underclassmen who are stepping up and learning, learning how to block better and just getting the job done. Well, yeah, they've had enough games in them now that they're not young anymore, even though they are pretty young. But I'm sure that that was a little heart thumper for you on the sidelines, Paul, as you, you, know, you see that first victory uh, in your grasp, and, but you still have to hold on and, and, and win a tough game at the end. Well, we, we gave Boyertown three minutes in, in that game, and I thought that was a little bit too much. We gave Norristown 19. I thought we could hang on yeah. for that, but when when I saw film and realized that these guys tackled their receiver on the 12-yard line, it's like, wow, and the first one's never easy. Yeah. You know, that that's the hardest one, and, um, you know, hopefully these guys will pick up on their last couple of wins, and I, I don't think so. I know they'll work hard to come out and uh, – Make a tremendous effort going into Friday's game against Park Hill and Valley. Well, you know you beat Bucktown. You're, or excuse me, you beat O and J at Bucktown, uh, which is a big win for you, 14 to 12. We talked about Jim and I talked about you know your kicker uh, Matt Kenwood, who did a good job making those extra points. O and J wasn't able to convert, and that seemed to be the, the difference in the game. What what did you think about going into that O and J game, uh, Ryan? What was your mindset? How did you prepare? What did you think you guys could do against the Cats? Uh, the coaching staff uh, and, uh, told us uh, that we believed that we could get the edge mainly against them, which is what our whole uh, game scheme was. So that ended get up working. A bit, yeah. That ended up working, and we were able to come up big. Um, it was just uh, everyone thought we were going to lose that game. The, our players not, though. We, we came out and practiced all week. We were projected to lose, and we just came out, and we were able to pull away in the fourth, fourth quarter. Now, what kind of things did you, uh, as a coach, defensively, obviously you must have had a, a solid game plan. You, you held them down. And I said Scherfel and some of those other kids were, had, had some pretty good years coming and being able to run the ball, but you, you did a really good job holding them down to 70 yards and then, again, pulling another one out at the end of the ball game. Sure. Well, you know, our defensive coordinator, Coach Ranieri, does a tremendous job week in and week out. Uh, former Mathacton player and um, went on to play and captain, captain the defense up at Chippensburg. And, um, it, you know, he, he, pretty, he pretty much set guys up in a position to be able to make plays. And um, he um, used some of the younger guys within, within the group of older guys because we had a couple of injuries that put, put guys out for uh, Friday night. And um, he, he was able to mesh the, the younger and the older guys together so, so that, you know, we were pretty well balanced to, on either side of the ball. And yeah. guys came up big. I mean, it, it's the yeah. players that make the plays. Yeah. We can do all the, you know, game planning we want and putting guys in a position to make a play, but these guys have to come out and do the job, and they certainly did that on Friday. Yeah, that's two weeks in a row, two great wins for the Warriors. Now, you know, it seems like you have a, a pretty big te uh, test ahead of you. You have the undefeated and number one ranked uh, Perkiom Valley Indians, um, which seems like it's uh, going to be a tough game for you. Uh, we'll start with you, Coach. Uh, how do you approach this game? What do you look at? What uh, kind of things? And obviously, we don't give up the whole game plan to, to everyone who's watching. But uh, you know, how do you approach this game? Sure. Well, 
you know, they're a well-balanced veteran, veteran football team. As Coach Mick said, you know, they, they need to mix the run and the pass in to prepare themselves for down the line. I've seen film of them. I think they already do a pretty good job of that on the offensive side of the ball. You know, they've got several weapons there, and certainly they're going to be hard to defend. But, again, we'll try to put our guys in a position to make plays and um, see how that goes. Again, their, their defense has always been um, a, a little bit slighted with, with the potency of their offense, and, and there's certainly some, some – they're certainly part of the game year in and year out that, that needs to be dealt with. They're quick off the ball. They don't miss tackles. And um, th they play very well. They play very good assignment football. So, you know, we're going to have to stay on our blocks. We're going to have to be able to try to, um, in the run game, get Ryan going a little bit. Um, and, um, you know, if we can find him a seam, if we can stay on blocks and find him a seam, He'll get those yards, and he also gets tough yards too. He'll take on a tackler and um, get those couple extra tough yards. So offensively, that's what we have to do. And then we have to give Jason a little bit of time in the pocket to uh, get the ball out. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a big game at your place, which is a big Friday night game. You know, we talked about the, the advantage of having that Friday night lights, if, if you will. And, and so you're going to be playing at Methacton. Uh, how do you approach this game, Ryan? Obviously, you know, you, you know who you're going up against. And uh, – you're going to prepare hard and play. Uh, it's just like any other week. You know, we're just going to come out, practice hard. There's really no excuses. Uh, they're just any other high school football team. Obviously, they're ranked for a reason. They're best right now in our division. We, if we just come out and play, hopefully we'll pull, pull ahead. Okay. What do you think about the division stuff? Do you like the way it's set up now, Ryan, uh, as opposed to the way it was before? It uh, doesn't really make a difference to me. I come out, I, I work hard, I, I play I, I play hard, I do as best I can, and I just try to make plays when I can. Paul, what, what are your feelings on the, the new setup with the two divisions? And then, of course, then we're going to talk a little bit about the conference crossover game at the end, but how, how do you like the way things have been going so far? I, I, th I like the division split because I think it's truly um, benefited the smaller teams. You know, if you look at our league the last several years, I think the win-loss ratio with the smaller schools playing the bigger schools, the bigger school had the advantage like 35 to 5 at one point. Correct, yeah. And, um, you know, it's tough week in and week out to compete with bigger teams. I think this way their their league schedule is the against the smaller teams. We're against, you know, the larger teams in our division. But then you can go out and get your non-league games to where you think your team is. Mm -hmm. Do you want to put – in our case, I didn't want to play a full 6A schedule because of the um, where our guys are mm -hmm. in the class. You know, the smaller senior class. Right. I wanted to go out and give us a, a opportunity on, on different weeks. Not not that it's going to be an easier contest, but that you know some some of these 6A teams, you know, are not not only um, very good but physical as well. Yeah. So I think it gives you that flexibility, and I, I think it's benefited, uh, you know, primarily the smaller teams, so so that their kids don't feel like, you know, every week it's mm -hmm. going to be that right. battle, uphill right. battle. Right, right now, there's some yeah. parity yeah. for them, which I think is very beneficial to the league as a whole. Now we always ask the guys. I guess everything is okay in the classroom, still taking care of all that business, Absolutely. Uh, and doing your job that way. We do have a lot of young kids that that really like to to watch, particularly this segment of the show, because. They get an opportunity to see some of the guys they watch on Friday nights and Saturday afternoons. So that's important that you take care of business there, so the classroom stuff. And I know, Coach, uh, you guys do a good job of maintaining the, the academic standards as well. So it's, it's good to see all that. What kind of things uh, do you see in the future for Ryan O'Toole? Uh, next year, you want to end up in some college somewhere? Are you going to go into service? What, what kind of things are you going to do? Absolutely. Uh, I'm trying to play ball in college, actually. Uh, I've been playing it since I can remember, probably since I was four years old. I just have a love for the game. It's my favorite sport. I watch it every weekend on the on TV. 
just I can't imagine myself not playing. Good, good, good. That's awesome, and hopefully that'll work out for you. You're not in the. Are you a fantasy football guy too, Ryan? A little bit. Oh man, <laughs> it's, it's funny. We had you know I talked to Marvin Pearson, who the the guy from Pottstown, who's been blind since he's been 10 years old, and he got an opportunity to score a touchdown. It was just a, an incredible thing. And I was talking to him. He has 17 fantasy teams. I don't know how he does it all. <laughs> But he, he, he loves it that much, and I know it's, it's such a, a big thing in, in today's world. But I want to thank you guys for stopping down. It's great to see you again, Paul. It's a nice uh, two-game win streak for the Warriors. I'm glad things are going. hope things are going to continue to change. And with, certainly with guys like Ryan around, uh, it's going to be that way. And I have a couple of things for you here, Ryan. We have a certificate from my buddy Phil Lang at the uh, Digi uh, Digital Print Works. Uh, declaring you for the player of the week here on the Monday morning quarterback show. That's something that, that you can have. And then from uh, our guy, our trophy in Black Shack, Charlie Pierce, who does a great job. We have our, we call it our little mini Heisman for you. So this is indicates that you were the player of the week as well. And congratulations. Thank you for that. Yes, thanks. Uh, Paul, always great to see you and talk to you. I guess I'll be running into you. We have a coaches meeting coming up yet, but uh, I'll see you then. But congratulations on a big win, guys, and, and good luck this weekend. Thank you, Dave. That's our player of the week from Methacton. That's Ryan O'Toole, senior uh, from the Warrior Squad, and his coach, Paul Dupree. When we come back, we got Joe C. and I coming up, the dynamic duo. We're going to break down as the Eagles Redskins for you right after these words from our sponsors. <laughs> Long last. Date night has arrived. And you want to make it something special. Something romantic. You've heard a lot of great things about Panavino in the new downtown district. Fine Italian dining. With a cosmopolitan flair. Drinks before dinner at the bar? Why not? Then it's just us. Savoring the creations of Chef David Brennan. What's this? Dinner and a movie for two? Only $50? Panavino Italian restaurant truly is the beginning of the perfect evening. In the new downtown Reading. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment, to countless draft beers, from great burgers, to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs, to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Established in 1916 and granted membership into the Philadelphia Golf Association in 1920, Brookside Country Club is well known for its challenging layout and true fast greens. The William Gordon design provides a challenge for golfers of all abilities. Brookside Country Club offers traditional club amenities in a family-friendly atmosphere. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. Tee it up at Linfield National Golf Club. It's a shot worth taking. PGA professional Robert Kleckner heads his family-owned course that covers over 6,300 yards of versatile playing ground. Located near the Linfield exit of Route 422, Linfield National drives competitive play at competitive rates. Stop for a cool one at Mulligan's, then swing an ego stroke on the simulator course. Take the video tour.
And there we are, the dynamic duo, again, brought to you by Fred Beans of Boyertown. Get over there, it's no better time than the present to go over there and see Denny Malloy and the gang and tell them the Monday morning quarterback sent you and pick yourself up a, a new car. Joseph, uh, well, I don't days. know, I don't know, man, <laughs> I don't know. I, I you know, it's, it's a funny situation. Uh, I really thought after the Eagles lost to, to Detroit the week before that they were going to come back uh, with their hair on fire and, and play lights out football. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, I, I have to admit, I really enjoyed watching the Washington Redskins offensive line. You know, we were just talking to Coach Mick about the wide nine and how it's not really a good defense against the run unless you have some big thumpers in the middle. But their offensive line actually controlled that game, Joe, and uh, it was a pleasure to watch. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, as opposed to the Eagles offensive yeah. line. Yeah, it was it – was, uh, it was a weird game. Again, they start out real slow. Yeah. They start out slow, and then they're down 14, and then all of a sudden they come back with the kick return and then the INT I return for yeah. a touchdown. Yeah. And you're thinking, okay, they're back in it. They started slow. They're going to be. They're going to be okay. And then it just they had nothing. They had nothing offensively. Five sacks. They sacked Wentz five times. I know, and he got hit eleven times. And that's and that's mainly because of the the Lane Johnson correct uh, problem. That's an issue. You just can't put someone in there and expect them to go. You well, know, full speed. So, okay, he goes against Graham. He goes against Cox in the, in in practice. But they're not it's allowed. Totally to, they're not allowed but to it's hit totally different. Yeah. At practice, then, yeah. is game speed. Yeah. We know that. Well, you know, but they also have, you know, the, what we used to call the scout team, where they, runs the, they run the other team's plays and stuff and formations. And so we're playing Coachville. We had our scout team, which are a bunch of younger kids, and some of the JVs would line up in Coachville stuff and try to emulate. You can never emulate what the other team does, right. especially when a team is very, very talented. But at the pro, pro level, it, it's even more difficult. But... I, I, you know, I have so many mixed emotions. I'm, I'm so mad at Lane Johnson yesterday um, for, for his screw-ups. But yet I'm also thinking, like, well, they know what's going to happen. Why don't, they, why don't they plan better for this? Because I tell you right now, whatever that guy's name is, and I don't even care to know how to pronounce it, uh, the V guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it v. was horrible. That Ryan Kerrigan. Who played small yesterday. Yeah, but, Kerrigan yeah, well, bull rushed yeah, him like he was nothing. And it was. Kerrigan's a good player. I know he is. He's a really good player. He, and he always plays real well against the Eagles for some reason. Um, you know, we're not going to blame him. We're not going to blame the refs uh, this week, even though they had 13 penalties. penalties. Again, yeah. Washington had nine penalties. Know. You know, some of the some of the uh, onus has to go on the defense. Absolutely. Eight yards a carry, and it wasn't just Matt Jones. It was Kelly. I know. It was and Thompson. Thompson. I mean, they were just getting yards. And, and they're not household names. I mean, no. I don't even know who these guys are. No, I don't even know if Kelly ever saw the field before yesterday. Is Kelly the guy they pulled down by the hair? Yeah. 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 Thank and, God he had long hair. He would have gotten yeah. 20 more yeah, yards. Exactly. But, but it, it, was, it, it was, was amazing. It was a lot of different things. The defense was at fault, the offensive line, and sack saw uh, the sacks. But Wentz seems like he was a little jittery yesterday. He was holding on the ball a little longer than he should have, and you just can't do that. Well, they know? don't have anybody who can get sacks. Separation. That's and that, part and of that's the problem. problem. That, Dude, that's they don't the have problem anybody who can get separation. Crowder and Jackson were running free all over the place. Here, you and I th were happy because Jordan Reed wasn't going to be there. Not happy that no, he was no, injured, no, but no, we no, thought no, that would help him give help. us an advantage. But, but, Here's the best tight end or maybe the best catching tight end in the league. He's hurt, and they don't miss a beat. But here's what they're doing now. Instead of playing zone, they're playing man-to-man. -man. And what that is is they're just telling you, okay, you can't beat us man-to-man. -man. We, we have you man-to-man. -man. You can't get biased. And nobody's, nobody on the Eagles can outrun one of the D-backs. That's a problem. Well, and, and also, you know, I talked about the offensive line of Washington early on. The fact is that they, they formed a nice little cup and pocket for Kirk Cousins, which allows him, you know, most NFL quarterbacks, given time, can make throws. And Cousins is probably above the, the medium line. He's a little bit above medium. He's a little better. He's better than average. And well, I'll tell you I what, agree. he threw the I ball agree. nicely yesterday. Given time and given separation, he was he was on point. I, I'm a Kirk Cousins fan, believe it or not. Um, but, yeah, you're exactly right. You, you get that time and you can, you can pick things apart. 
but you also have to be able to, you know, do your progressions and get rid of the ball quickly. And and that's what Wentz wasn't doing yesterday. Well, and and I can't totally blame him for that, but he didn't have anybody there was open. Nobody open. As I said, so okay, so he gets rid of the ball quickly, avoids the sack, but was he throwing INT? Does he throw the ball away? I mean, uh, Matthews cannot get separation. Aguilar. Who knows? Zach Ertz, and I, and you know I've never been a Zach Ertz fan. And I think he's one of the most overrated guys there one are. Pass he's was soft. In his hands. He's he there. Had, you know yeah. why? Because he's looking who's going to come and hit me. Because yeah. he's soft. Yeah. And like I said, Selleck is a tough guy. But, heck, they had him blocking wow, most of the time. Yeah, and then he had a, yeah, and then he had a, a hold call on him because that's not really what he does. But he gives it his best. And, and, and let's – let's you we talked about this last week. I don't know if it was on the air or off the air about Jason. Kelsey. Yeah, two more you holding calls. You said that. Yeah. Two more holding calls. He's undersized. But the the thing is, is, the reason why he's still in there is because he's smart and he knows where to line guys with the blocking schemes and all that. That's why he's in there. But he's getting pushed around like a rag doll. Well, that's what I said. That Baker guy, oh, my gosh, he put a 320-pounder <laughs> on there, and it's like nothing. You know, it's like blocking a blocking dummy. And I still don't know what they have against Wisniewski. Steven Wisniewski was a good player at Penn State. He was a good player with the Oakland Raiders. They bring him in for depth. Well, you know, what kind of depth are they using when they keep him on bench? He's either got to be playing center or he's either got to be playing right, a left guard and move the left guard you, over to tackle. But for some reason, uh, Peterson doesn't want to affect the psyche you, of this young kid. You talked about that last yeah, week, I and did. I think it was after yeah. the show we yeah. were talking. And you said about Wisniewski being the, being the center. Yeah. And you know what? At, at, at a point, I mean, they're 3-0, and you know, they lost two in a row. And, and the way that uh, Pittsburgh got – manhandled yesterday by um, Miami. Yeah. I'm starting to think now that maybe that Pittsburgh would win wasn't that big of a deal. Well, you know? I think I think part of the Pittsburgh thing was when Roethlisberger goes down, the whole air of that balloon goes out, even though, you know, that's not an excuse because you have to continue to play. But without Roethlisberger, Pittsburgh is, is a very, very pedestrian team in my book because Landry Jones, I'm not crazy about No, that. yeah, no, I know. But you look at it, somebody like Pittsburgh, Sammy Coates, Antonio Brown, you look at all the teams, that the, you know, Julio Jones, Beckham yesterday, and I'm believe me, yeah, I'm, I'm off. Him. I, don't I'm, even, I didn't I'm, even want to I'm, bring I'm, his yeah, name no, up. I know, but you know, you look at those guys with the speed that they have, and you know, now you're looking at the Eagles. They have they have no one of that caliber. Well, you know, not to change the subject completely, but I do want to bring up the fact that you know uh, Mike's Brick Oven Pizza on North Charter Street in Pottstown is is has been a long time uh, supporter of the Monday Morning Quarterback. They called me up. They're back. Uh, not only is he delivering pizzas, he's got pizzas and Stromboli's here. It's, this whole set is smells. That what smells. Oh my God, it smells, smells so good. good. <laughs> but they're also involved in, in the Halloween thing. And don't forget about the Temple of Terror down there uh, on North Franklin Street in Pottstown. They love that Halloween stuff. And again, you can see 2016. It's like the fifth year in a row they were voted best pizza and best stromboli. So make sure you get over there to see Mike and Chris and all the gang at Mike's Brick Oven Pizza. And again, I want to thank them and again, welcome them back on board. And we appreciate them stopping by and giving us some stuff here on set as well. But you know what? Let's go take a quick time out, okay. Joe. I'll get a quick drink of water. It's very warm in here tonight. When it's warm outside, boys get warm yeah, in here as we were up in the high 70s today in a nice fall. Uh, for all day. But he's Joe C. I'm Dave Ryan now. We are the dynamic duo, and we will be back on the Velahost Insurance Monday morning quarterback right after this. At Velahost Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Blahos of Blahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. At long last, date night has arrived. And you want to make it something special. Something romantic. You've heard a lot of great things about Panavino in the new downtown district. Fine Italian dining. With a cosmopolitan flair. Drinks before dinner at the bar? Why not? 
Then it's just us. Savoring the creations of Chef David Brennan. What's this? Dinner and a movie for two. Only $50? Panovino Italian Restaurant truly is the beginning of the perfect evening. In the new downtown Reading. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from great burgers to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly Doc service, Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Back here on the Vlaustone Shorts Monday morning quarterback, Dave Ridenauer, Joe C., the dynamic duo. And, and Joseph, you know what I uh, noticed also? Fletcher Cox, zero tackles yesterday. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I mean, he's the guy who wanted to hold out, got all that money. He's like one of the highest paid defensive players in the league. I think only Sue is higher than him maybe from that defensive front. Uh, zero tackles. Yeah, he was on. He was on WIP on my way up tonight, and he was beating himself up. Well, they, yeah, he said he played horrible. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, each week we do do a segment called "By the Numbers." Speaking of that, is a pretty good segue. I didn't even. I surprised myself with that one, Jeff. <laughs> but uh, my man Jackie Greasmer, Jack Greasmer, John H. Greasmer, as a matter of fact, Junior. My accountant and tax man, again, give him a holler. He's right over there in Boyertown, right next to Seville's Diner for uh, all your needs. Uh, he does a great job for me. What do you got by the numbers over there? Anything good uh, shooting out I, yeah, of you, Mr. Fantasy Guy? Yeah, you know what? I got, yeah, well, I'm not really going to go well, – well, I could, there's a couple things I could do. But right. I'll, I'll give you this one. I'll all give right. you the other one a uh, li little later because okay. I thought that was interesting. You know Brady is 60-5 and five all know, time in I New know, England? I know. 60 and five. I know. I, yeah. That's incredible. Well, I think he's like 39 and one against the AFC <laughs> East at home or something. I saw that today. I was like, that yeah. is crazy. Yeah. And and uh, the the Carolina Panthers, after six games, have 14 turnovers. Last year, the whole entire season, they only had 19. Really? So yeah. You no know, the wonder why they're. No wonder they're Cam at. was a little grumpy on his uh, post game speech yesterday. Uh, I, I was, you know, the number that sort of jumped out at me is the fact that, you know, and I'm not, I, I don't really, I hate when coaches get fired because it's such a tough job and it's hard to blame them a lot of times. Sometimes it's the players, sometimes it's a scheme, it's a situation. But since they fired the offensive coordinator at Buffalo, Shady McCoy has really cranked it up. I mean, he had 140 yards and three TDs yesterday yeah, in, yeah. in a big game. And Shady seems to be coming to life a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we talk about Shady, talk about Deshaun, talk about all the guys that uh, Mr. Kelly know, gave away. And uh, let's look at DeMarco Murray, how, what he's doing over in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. He's playing real well, and uh, they're, they're doing well, too. Well, I, I really wasn't that upset to see DeMarco Murray go. He didn't really fit. He certainly didn't fit in with Chip Kelly's uh, stretch and, and uh, the scheme that he runs. You know, he's more of an eye back and straight between the right. tackles. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't mind Shady McCoy. Uh, Deshaun, I didn't know because I know he had a lot of problems behind the scenes, late for meetings, didn't show up for things. And, you know, that didn't go over real well. And, and again, I, he was motivated yesterday. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But he dropped that big touchdown pass, too. <laughs> He was a little upset. Yeah. So yesterday there were seven teams that had 100-yard rushers. Of those seven teams, they were six and one. Really? Seven teams had 300-yard passers. Of those seven one teams, one team won. They were one and six. Correct. 
And that's what I keep trying to say. And they just want, and that's why, you know, as much as Drew Brees can put up numbers, he's yeah. going to stack up the, the two 400 yard passers yeah. were 2 and 0. Yeah. But yeah, but, he's but it to, doesn't necessarily does mean it, does it, that by chucking the ball, you're, you're going to win. win. Yeah, high percentage. Brady, Brady is the one guy, but he spreads it around so much. But, you know, it was funny. I watched a little bit of that game, and Gronk got after it with that little cheap shot. On Perfect Bennett. guy. Yeah. By, on, on Bennett. Yeah. Martellus Bennett. Well, yeah, but he also, got, I think, Perfect almost went after got Gronk him. a little bit, got too. Him a little bit and too. Pac Man Jones is there, and I just laughed with Gronk. He's staying up there, and he's nose and nose <laughs> with him and stuff. Uh, I just love that guy. I think he's amazing. But you know what? I was We were talking about that wide nine defense before, and a couple of things I wrote down here is that I think Connor, Connor Barwin. Connor Barwin. Was he, is, did he play yesterday? Well, you know what? He's not made for that defense. And you're going to see a lot more of Vinnie Curry. You're probably even going to see a lot more of that uh, Smith, the, the draft pick from Louisville. Michael Smith, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he, play, made, but, he had a, he had but a, he, a I, I, he, did, he did, and he actually stepped up in between a guy, yes. too, and gave him a, yeah, shot. Him a shot. And I'm like, Marcus yeah. Smith? I was like, Mar holy. Yeah, Marcus Smith. Yeah, I'm Marcus like, darn. I, I, I actually like that from a little Louisville, bit. From Louisville, right. Yeah, Louisville right, guy. Right, right. But well, I feel bad for Connor Barwin because he seems like he's just not made for that wide nine be, defense. He might be slowing down a little bit too. Well, you know? he's yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. But he and and Hicks, you know, I don't know if Hicks is big enough to play in the middle of that defense. He needs some guys to keep Lyman off him, but he just hasn't been able to have that. And and now Benny Logan, who had been playing pretty well, is going to be week to week with yeah. a little injury too. Yeah, and, yeah. Man, I mean, that's that's not that, good. That's the adversity that you have to go through yeah. during the year to stay try and that stay big, healthy. That, the big uh, weight guy, though, that big Bo Allen guy, well, yeah. he's, man, he's a, monster. he's a monster. They showed his arms. I was like, holy cow. Looked like Ronnie Gumbarch back in the day. But he was he played pretty good uh, yesterday well, as well. Let me ask you this before All you right. move on. Uh, Romo, when no. he's healthy, back? No. 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 I agree. I, I, know, I know Jerry Jones is saying put him back in. Uh, you know, he's my quarterback. He's the man. But how can you – how can you take Dak Prescott out? Yeah. Three TDs yesterday yeah. through his first INT. But how can you take him out and and just put Romo back in? Well, I, I, I say you keep I, Prescott I, in yeah. and you use Romo, Romo as your insurance. Yeah, he's yeah. going to be he'll, – he'll be Don Strzok. And you know what, Tony? You're still going to get paid. Stand on the sideline with your little visor on and your clipboard. And if they do need him to come into a game due to injury or whatever – He'll be okay, but I, I would, I would, I would think Tony Romo. I know he's, you know, they're competitors and all that stuff, but, right. dude, take a break. All right, let's do the game <laughs> balls before we do our next break. Uh, Joe, go ahead. I'll let you go first. There's our buddy, Paul Strauss from the Styling Room at 943 North Hanover Street in Pottstown, and I will be visiting him shortly for another trim. As he always does a, a great job. Uh, Paul's a good man, an Army veteran. Uh, good dude. Go ahead. Uh, you know what? Staying with the uh, running theme, I'm going to go with uh, Jay Jai from Miami. He had 25 rushes for 204 yards, 8.2 average, and two TDs against Pittsburgh, which has a pretty decent defense. Yeah. You know, they're they're not not they're poor. not the steel curtain, they're, right? They're not they're, the steel yeah. curtain, but they're not bad. But you know what? I wonder if Ajay was like kind of looking over his shoulder because Arian Foster's getting healthy. And they're all like, oh, Arian Foster, Arian Foster. And I think Ajay made a little bit of a statement and said, hey, yo, what about Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, he, he did a great job. I, I watched so him. I used to love to him. watch Boise State, and he played at Boise. And, and uh, they were always good, and he was on TV quite a bit. I'm going with the Buffalo Bills fans as they gave a good, loud, rousing boo to the quarterback from the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> when he ran onto the field. They let him know how they felt about him. And Shady McCoy brought up 15 policemen as his guest for the day. It was a pretty good statement. I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I'm, I'm going to start. I, I, you know I'm not the biggest Rex Ryan guy. I'm not. But I'm going to watch those Buffalo Bills now after their fans proved to be pretty good on Sunday afternoon as they let Kaepernick know what they thought about him. So I'm going Buffalo Bills fans with my game ball. Very nice. Did you see the statement that Jerry Jones made? Uh, I did not. About that if anyone doesn't stand for uh, whether it's uh, whether it's the ball boy or it's anyone in the executive office, office that they will no longer be part of the Dallas Cowboy organization. That's good. And, that, and you know you need more people like Jerry. He's another wild card sometimes. But, hey, that's a pretty good statement. Hey, we're going to take another timeout. 
And when we come back, we have a couple of things to talk about. We have our five-pack picks. I got my big Frank question for you, waiting in the wings as well. He's Joe C. I'm Dave Ridenauer. We're the dynamic duo, and we'll be right back. long last. Date night has arrived. And you want to make it something special. Something romantic. You've heard a lot of great things about Panavino in the new downtown district. Fine Italian dining. With a cosmopolitan flair. Drinks before dinner at the bar? Why not? Then it's just us. Savoring the creations of Chef David Brennan. What's this? Dinner and a movie for two? Only $50? Panavino Italian restaurant truly is the beginning of the perfect evening. In the new downtown Reading. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment, to countless draft beers, from great burgers, to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs, to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Established in 1916 and granted membership into the Philadelphia Goth Association in 1920, Brookside Country Club is well known for its challenging layout and true fast greens. The William Gordon design provides a challenge for golfers of all abilities. Brookside Country Club offers traditional club amenities in a family-friendly atmosphere. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. Tee it up at Linfield National Golf Club. It's a shot worth taking. PGA professional Robert Kleckner heads his family-owned course that covers over 6,300 yards of versatile playing ground. Located near the Linfield exit of Route 422, Linfield National drives competitive play at competitive rates. Stop for a cool one at Mulligan's, then swing an ego stroke on the simulator course. Take the video tour. Hey, back here on the set of the PCTV Network again, I'm Dave Ryan there, joined by my good friend and uh, associate here, Joe C. Joseph, let's throw the big Frank question out there. Let's throw that out there. I have one. I actually have two, but I, I'm going to give you one. There's my buddy right there. Look at us. That's Again, that was one of the most fun nights that we had, and, and uh, we certainly do miss him. He was certainly one of our biggest fans, and you couldn't have find a, found a better guy and a nicer guy and a bigger Eagles fan. He would have been a little upset. He, I could just imagine his call this week about the Eagles as they lost two in a row. But again, I want to thank his son, Ronnie Batar, Big Z as he's known, affectionately around town. Clean cut for helping us out and sponsoring uh, our Big Frank's uh, question of the week. And, and I have two of them. I want to give you this one first. Oh, there, there are two active receivers that have 100-plus touchdown catches in the top ten. There are ten guys that have 100 or more Touchdown receptions for TDs, uh, and two of them are active. Fitzgerald? And there's two of them. Think about it for a minute, right, and I'll give right. you a chance. Yeah, you got Fitzgerald. Yeah, you got right. Fitzgerald right. is one. Right. Okay. He is number eight. He's got 103. He is number eight, and then there's another active uh, guy that you probably won't get, but uh, he's out there. And, again, I want to thank our, our, our new sponsors, again, Mike, uh, Mike's Brick, uh, pizza, uh, Brick Oven Pizza for uh, helping us out here in the good thing. Get over there and check out that Temple of Terror as well. But let's go uh, Let's go to our five-pack picks while you're thinking there a little bit. I had a good week last week. I was a uh, four and Bolden. one. Huh? Anquan Bolden. No. Oh. No. All right. Nope. Sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. All right. Our uh, five-pack five picks. Yeah, yeah. I was four to, and one. Trying to interrupt you. What? Uh, yeah, uh, right. Uh, you were trying to interrupt three. you. Daddy. Yeah. You did a good job. Okay. I w I'm 17 and 8 on the year. And, again, I want to thank Panavino. Again, Jim Mick was over there last Monday. That's why he was off. They had a, a golf outing in honor of Tommy Zemak, and uh, uh, we just wish all them the best. All right, let's go to tonight's game, Jets and Cards. Jets and Cards. we got to take Arizona. My gosh. Yeah, what I'm going horrible, with them, too. What a horrible game, huh? But, you know, it's so, sort of neat. You know, uh, Todd Bowles, who was one of Bruce Arians' guys, played for him at Temple. Bruce Arians had yeah, him as a true. defensive it's coordinator. True. And yeah, he yeah, helped yeah. to get him this sure. job. So yeah. this is going to be a neat game. I'm going cards as well. Okay. You're going cards. Right. How about the Giants and the Rams in London? 
Woo! Uh, you know what? I like, I like Case Keenum. I like Case Keenum. And uh, I'm going to take the Rams. Okay. I'll go the other side. I really don't have a, a, a real just... strong thing. But I'll go the other <laughs> side. I'll go the Giants <laughs> on this one. You know, they held Curly down. He didn't do much last week. Now those upstart Washington Redskins are playing the Detroit Lions, who maybe they're not that bad. They won two in a row. Washington travels to Detroit. I'm taking Detroit. So am I. So am I. I think there's going to be a little letdown in, uh, in our nation's capital. Now New England plays at Pittsburgh. Now this game was, looked like it was a pretty good game there. Uh, now all of a sudden Roethlisberger had some minor surgery today. So you, I'm going New, New England, England for so sure. So am I. So am yeah. I. All right, and our last game is Minnesota at our Eagles uh, next week. Uh, boy, that doesn't look so good. I, I got to be honest with you. I, I should just take Minnesota so that the Eagles will win. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I can't get it right. Uh, I can't get it right. Well, I'm going Minnesota. I'll, I don't care. I'm going Minnesota. I'll take the Eagles. All right. You, All right, take, you Eagles. take Minnesota. I'll, I'll take Sammy Eagles. Sleeves, and you can have them. Oh, uh, man. You can so, have them. Oh, uh, I, I'm telling you. It's uh, crazy. All well, right. the answer, the answer, wait, wait. Andre Johnson. No. Antonio Gates. Br Antonio oh, Gates. Gates. Oh, yeah. He, you said wide receiver. No, I did. No, Play I the did. tape back. No, you I said wide receiver. I said receivers. Ooh, very nice. Gates, yeah. I said two active Gates. receivers. Yeah, okay, Antonio, okay. He's in number right. seven. He has 106. Okay. And Fitzgerald has 103. But right. you know what's funny? Right. I was going to also throw this out at you as we have about 30 seconds here. You know, the Redskins averaged seven yards a carry. Right. It was the highest they've had in 31 years. Who was the running back 31 years ago when they averaged seven yards a carry in a game? I, I remember Larry Brown, but I don't think that was John Lloyd. Riggins. John Riggins. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Since Larry Rico Brown. Did, yeah. Yeah, I remember Larry awesome. Brown. Yeah. My gosh. Hey, well, listen, uh, that's about it, Joe. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Somehow Joe petitioned for two weeks' vacation time, so I'm going to have to renegotiate his contract. I'm going to have to call his agent, and that's not, not always a, a fun time. Uh, but anyway. He's Joe C. I'm Dave Ryan. Now we had a lot of fun on the show again tonight. I'll see you next Monday.